Welcome to the Summit on the MidwestSports.net YouTube channel. We are also streaming live tonight on the OklahomaSports.net Twitter feed. I'm Joy McWilliams with MidwestSports.net, and I am very pleased and privileged to get to be joined by the head coach of the Mid-America Christian Evangels men's basketball team, Coach Josh Gamblin. Coach, there's a lot going on in the sports world right now, and it seems like there's not a lot going on because, well, we're going to be without sports for a little while, but... The theme of MidwestSports.net right now is that we're going to keep on talking sports until we get sports back. So sure. <laughs> there we go. That's that's how we're going to head into this. Uh, I appreciate you being on the show with me tonight. Of course, we're live streaming from the YouTube channel and Twitter feed. But I think also just to let everyone know that um, you owed me one. Right. <laughs> you owed me one. <laughs> <laughs> we were in yeah. Oklahoma City getting to do the Midwest Sports Saturday show uh, all three or four weeks ago, back in the pretty much the middle of the season in January. I guess it's it's been longer than that. You were the only coach that was on the court that day that I didn't get to visit with live, and man, I was just so sad. No, I got over it. It's okay. I can't believe you brought me. <laughs> Should never brought me. It was on me for sure. I messed that one up big time. I messed that one up big time. <laughs> no, and and by the way, you did come away with a win that day. One of 30 right. wins on the season, a 30 and two season for Mid America Christian. Now, let's, you know, again, we're not going to bury the lead. And I wanted to uh, to bring this up here really quickly um, to look at. This is what I would like to have been talking about. And I don't know if you can see that, but that yeah. is from. Your website, the Mid America Christian website, talking about the fact that the men's basketball team locked up the number one seed. Uh, that was even with a loss in the Sooner Athletic Conference tournament yeah. championship game. And, and coach, not to bring up that loss, but just to say how good a season that was sure. that, you know, you guys could uh, pull off a seed, uh, a top seed uh, in the 32 team NAI tournament. Talk about wrapping up that number one seed and what that meant for your program. Well, it's a credit to our guys. You know, um, I'm I just uh, so blessed to be able to coach them. Um, they they work their tail off all year. You know, um, I think if I remember correctly, we got to about 20 and 0 or around there and maybe even a little bit less than that. And we lost Cedric Wright, who um, probably most know was kind of our enforcer, arguably our best player. And our kids continued to fight and figure it out. We kind of became a little bit different of a team. You know, we were uh, much more inside out through the first half of the season um, and obviously had a lot of weapons. Ashford Golden had an unbelievable year. Terrence Jones, Devon Moore, Tony Dorsey, Dom Ford. Uh, you can go down the line uh, with our group. Kalen Woodson, I mean, our seniors were we're just incredible, uh, thankful for the guys. But we transitioned into a little bit different of a team. We played a little bit faster, uh, shot the three a little bit more. But it's really a, a credit to our kid. We didn't have a ton of games there late in the season that were blowouts or 10-point victories. We clawed out several uh, one- or two-possession games, and they just they just figured out ways to win games. So just just proud of them, thankful for them. Well, Coach, you get the number one seed, and, and I know the bracket reveal was earlier this week talking about the Division One NAI bracket reveal, and it was slated to be the final 32-team NAI right. Division One bracket because the two divisions now next year are all going to be one division, which you know I think there's a lot of good in that. I think there's a lot that can come from that. Of course, the, the flip side of it is all the tradition and history of a 32-team bracket for so long, uh, really that's that's going to be now something that's history as it will be a 64-team bracket next year in the NAI. Unfortunately for your, your men's team, you didn't get a chance to be a part of that tournament because of what's gone on with the COVID-19 virus. And, and I, again, I'm not sure what to say, Coach, what words are going to get me bumped or banned or excommunicated from YouTube. So I'll just say COVID-19 and go from there. Uh, talk about what's gone on with your program over the course of the last week. Well, it, it's been sure it's, it's fully set in. Um, you know, we lose in the conference tournament and we're upset with kind of the way we played and it's a credit to Sagu. They kicked our butt, you know, um, <laughs> but you start kind of immediately preparing for, okay, we, we have some practice time now. It's going to be the first time for a while. There's a little bit of a break. We can kind of, we can get back and figure some things out and get better. And then, you know, the selection show of course is a few days ago and we draw hope international, the one seed. And so you immediately go into prep mode for that. 
And then everything kind of start the wheels start turning on this deal. And I think it was the night before um, they canceled our tournament, the NBA shuts down. And I just right. think you know, everybody kind of knows, hey, when the NBA stops, uh, what are the amateurs going to do? You know, so immediately our, you know, your our guys are texting me and kind of our group text and just saying, hey, coach, you know, are we are we sure we're going to play? Play, you know, and um, so it's it's it was a heartbreaking week. Um, but yeah, I, I'll say this: if 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 our guys are leaving MacU and their identity is in the game of basketball, then in some ways we have failed them. You know, one more game or two more games or three more games or even a, a championship is not going to define them. You know, we hope more than anything that. Uh, their time at MacU, they've they've strengthened a relationship with Christ or started a relationship with Christ, and their identity is in that. Um, because basketball is fleeting, and you saw that, you know, in the last forty eight hours, this game can be taken away from you at any time. So it's it's been truly unbelievable. Um, I don't know if the right word is uncharted or unchartered, but that's where we're in right now. It's un, uncharted or unchartered time. So uh, we'll see what happens over the next month. It could be even crazier, I imagine. Well, you know, either one of those words I think works, Coach, but I, I, I don't think I could have said that any better than that because, you know, this really has exemplified what you're talking about. And we've heard it for years. I've heard this for, for many, many years. You know, there's going to come a day when you don't play anymore. Now, for me, that happened a little while back. So <laughs> it's, it's been a few years since since that that they came across. But to literally have it taken away and you, and – the players nowadays, these seniors on, in so many different levels, they played their last game and they didn't know they played their last game sure. until after the fact. And so that's a very good point. Our, our identity has to be found in something beyond just basketball. I appreciate you talking about that. Well, sure. let's let's go back to them to basketball for just a moment and, and talk about 30 wins. I mean, four teams in the NAI that had 30 wins this season. Of course, uh, Georgetown from Kentucky, pretty much the number one team in the country all the way through and coming off of a national championship win as well. Uh, and, and rightfully so, but, but you all made noise through, through the course of the season. At what point did you look at your team and say, you know, we really have something here? Well, I don't know if you ever, you know, I, I don't know if you ever say that. I mean, I think we kind of, you know, as the season goes, you start thinking last game, next game, you know, how did we play in our last game? What do we need to do to get better? And, what is this next team going to try to hurt us with or, or where do we need to attack them? But, um, and I thought that's what kind of helped our group as we never looked ahead. Um, each game was its own um, ordeal and we had to figure out ways to win. I, but again, I go back to kind of what we talked about at the beginning. The thing I'm most proud of is we were, we were two completely different teams and <laughs> yeah. our, our, our young men figured out ways to win games in my opinion, in the best league in the country at our level, um, against great coaches, great teams, night in and night out. And so for our guys to come out of there and, and win 30 is uh, an accomplishment that, that will live on f for a long time at our university. Boy, that, that definitely has to be the case. And, you know, you oversaw – a national championship team just a few years back. So, you know, I, and I'm not even going to ask you to compare the two teams because I know that there's no way you compare <laughs> those two teams, but still uh, to you're look at it. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. And you yeah. have so many kids coming back. Let's, let's talk about that then really quickly, because you know, the, the next season will be upon you well before long. And I guess really, if you look at it right now, like you said, you already can start preparing for next season because you, you know, it's, you're not going to get in trouble looking ahead now. Uh, so many juniors, including Dorsey, including Ford, including Woodson uh, that played some significant roles and so many others. Uh, right. This is really a junior laden team. Yeah, no. And, you know, first, you know, we're, we're losing some, some outstanding players, uh, Cedric Wright, Ashford Golden, Tory Young, Devon Moore, and even Kalen Woodson actually is going to, he's going to go be a doctor. So he's a lot smarter than all of us. Um, <laughs> But we lose we lose five guys who are so special to me. It's hard to put into words. Um, they've worked their tails off, and they've, um, golly, they've just represented everything we want to be about at MacU and had a great year. But but you're correct. We bring back quite a few and quite a few guys who, in you know, on a lot of other teams could have had much bigger roles. You know, Terrence Jones ended up being All Conference, um, All Region. 
Dom Ford's been a, a, a you know basically a starter the last two years for us, and will be a you know almost a three year starter when his time's up next year. But guys, uh, Tony Dorsey is one of the best point guards we feel like we've had in our time at MacU. Uh, but Demarius Brooks, Carlos Slaughter, and Marvin Lowe are all super talented kids who um, just had to take a little bit of a back seat. But when their name was called this year, were very, very good. And hopes are are really high for our team coming back. But we also know, you know, um, the target will be on our back, much like it was this year. And we have to continue to get better. You know, the thing. The thing that we think about a lot in our program is the year after we won the national championship, we went 16 and 16. And right. that's probably the year as a coach that you think about more than any other low. And so um, continue to get better and we'll have to go sign a, a couple players, but it is nice not to have to sign too many for sure. You know, but uh, <laughs> excited, excited about the future and just more than anything blessed to, to be the coach. Well, and, and I appreciate you being with me today, Coach Coach Josh Gamlin from Mid-America Christian. And with just a couple more minutes of your time tonight, uh, Coach, I'm, I'm glad you did mis- mention those seniors. I wanted to lead into them a little bit, but I want to take that transition with the juniors. But, uh, you know, it's it's easy to talk about all those players you did because you, you have 10 players yeah. that averaged into double figures of minutes on the court, and that's not something you see all the time. Right. No, it was – and sometimes especially, that's especially true. A team that wins thirty games, right? It's and and I think if you don't have the right mental makeup, um, playing too many guys, it's a situation where you can, you know, you can't make everybody happy, and you turn into making nobody happy. And it, it was a credit to our kids; they sacrificed for one another all year long. Um, I thought some guys' numbers are a little bit lower because we had so many guys that could do so many things, and so. Um, for, for senior, like Devon Moore came off the bench for us this year and could have started on any team in the country. Terrence Jones, the same way. Um, Ashford Golden had an, out, an outstanding year, but one could have argued he probably could have scored more points on other teams. Uh, <laughs> Cedric Wright had an unbelievable year, but you know, Dom Ford, who was, you know, our, our basically only starter returning off last year's team. He just, he just does whatever he's asked. You know, if that's two shots a game and 10 rebounds, he does it. You know, he just makes the right play. And um, so that depth really carried us through, especially when we lost Cedric. But I also know at times depth can be tricky. You know, guys want to play and they're competitive and they want shots. And so it's a credit to the character of our young men that they sacrifice for one another. And, you know, that's that's really the, a big part of it of a team that has the talent that can win 30 games. Not And there are teams out there, I would imagine, that have – similar levels of talent to what to what you had but to to be able to put that together in jail and and that's how you win those 30 games right 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 absolutely no and you know uh i think every every group of every season you you know you sit down and talk about sacrifice you talk about hey our our goal is to win when it comes to basketball games it's not individual awards but naturally we all want to be the guy we all want to shoot we all want to score i mean heck you know, each year as I get older, I tell my kids I averaged a few more points than I actually did, you know, <laughs> and, um, and our guys, they were they were truly OK with, you know, one night it's Tony's night, one night it's Cedric night, one night it's Marvin's night. Uh, as long as we get the win, coach, let's keep getting better. And that just makes my job uh, really fun and, and pretty easy, to be honest. Well, Coach, I, I appreciate what you do, and, and I, I would attest to the fact that what I've seen from you uh, in in my time in getting to visit with you and work with you over the years and and just the time like like tonight, uh, you know you talked about the the kids and how they they live an example and they're finding their identity in Christ. I, I believe you you lead the way in in leading that and and being a good Christian example for them. So I appreciate that in you. So my final question then tonight and and I know that this and. You know what? Twenty-four hours from now, this question may be completely. I mean, your answer may be completely different. So that's just the pace that the news has been changing <laughs> at lately, and it was yeah. so tough to keep up with on Thursday. I mean, just I mean, every story you you would get it online, and then it would change. Yeah. So, <laughs> so my question then to you right now: uh, what what's the next step for Coach Gamblin? What's the next step for the Evangels men's basketball team? Uh, well, I mean, the next step is for our seniors to stay on track academically, to graduate, our juniors the same way for for academic progress, graduation progress, and then eligibility. But 
Um, right now, I think is a time where it's it's an it's kind of a tricky time. I know I think most schools as ours are at spring break, and then you have the option for the next two weeks to live off campus and do all your work online. Which, as a coach, and I'm sure as a parent, and probably scares you to death for grades and tests and doing all those things. So I think making sure our guys are on track academically is the most important part. Um, but again, I'll use the the two words we're we're unchartered, you know, uncharted. I mean, it's it's going to be a very interesting time. I'm thankful to be home to to see my kids more, to be around them, to be a dad, and um, I, I'm I'm so blessed to have a wife who knows you know, how much of a grind the, the coaching profession is. But I think at times she's ready to hand over the kids to me and say, Hey, I'm going to go to bed early. You know, so I'm on, I'm on daddy duty and trying to take care of our guys and, and make sure they're ready to take the next step in their life. All right. Well, success to you then and success to, to the, uh, to the team. I, I would like to send my, my uh, congratulations to them uh, for any that happen to be watching or any that you have the chance to pass along to, to 30 wins on a season. I- they're at the tops in my book, and and uh, you know I I don't think I have the authority to confer a national championship, so um, I won't do that on the program. But still, they're they're right up there at the top, and uh, just a successful season. So congratulations to them and to you as well, Coach Josh Gamlin. Thank you so much for taking time with us tonight here on the Summit. Hey, thanks, Joe. I appreciate what you do for our sport, and I promise uh, anytime you need me again, I'll be there. I won't. We won't have a shoot around that day. <laughs> We'll make sure that happens. We will. We will be back up there. As a matter of fact, I think it is on the list that uh, Midwest Sports Saturday is supposed to originate from Mid America Christian in the 2020 2021 uh, calendar year. So I'm looking forward to that and be on you. So you can't get away with me or from me on your own home court. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll find you in there. I know where your office is, so that's all right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, Coach Josh Gamlin here on the summit tonight on the MidwestSports.net YouTube channel. Please do subscribe to this channel. We are definitely focusing on small college sports, high school sports, and we want to do things, give a positive attitude, and and just represent all that we do well. So please do subscribe to this channel. And a uh, shout out again to the Mid America Christian team for a successful season. For Josh Gamlin, I'm Joey McWilliams. Thanks for watching tonight. God bless you. Have a great night.